Welcome back, everybody, to episode number 17 of NHL Deal or No Deal. This is probably going to be the final one before the trade deadline, and then there won't be another one till the offseason. The reason for that being, I just don't want the series to get, you know, stale and repetitive, but I did want to make sure I made at least one more before the deadline, so that's what we're going to do today. I made the post on the community tab actually three days ago, so there was a good amount of time for you guys to get your mock trades in, and there was a lot to go through. At the time I'm recording this video, there is pretty much 700 comments on that post, which is by far, I think, the most we've ever gotten. So as always, thank you so much to everybody who went and left a mock trade. You guys literally make this series what it is. If you guys would like to stay connected outside of YouTube, you can go ahead and follow my social medias like Instagram and Twitter. The links to those will be down below in the description. And most importantly, if this is your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, before we get started, I have to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. It is a service that encrypts your internet traffic and hides your IP with a physical location. I told myself that I would never do any brand deals unless it was something that I really thought would benefit you guys, or hockey fans in general pretty much. Now I'm sure you might be thinking, well what does NordVPN have to offer to a hockey fan? Well if you are like me and have an annual subscription to NHL Live, I'm sure you have encountered this from time to time. It's annoying me just looking at the screen. Regional blackouts are probably one of the least convenient things in the entire world. However, with NordVPN, you no longer have to worry about these blackouts. NordVPN has many other perks, but getting around regional blackouts is something that I thought would benefit you all the most. NordVPN can also be used to access geo-blocked sports content such as sports documentaries, movies, and TV shows on many different streaming devices, such as Netflix. NordVPN can also be used on up to six different devices. So if this is something that interests you, head down and click the top link in the description to get started. And when you use promo code ONYQUIS, you will get 70% off a two-year subscription plus an additional month free and a surprise gift. And the best part is, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not satisfied. But make sure you use that top link in the description and promo code ONYQUIS. Huge thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now let's begin. So the first comment of the video comes from Bar Down God. This one had a lot of likes, so I figured I'd feed feature it. Vancouver receives Bobby Ryan and Detroit receives two second round picks. Um, I think in all likelihood we will see Bobby Ryan traded sometime between now and the trade deadline, but I'm not sure if the Vancouver Canucks trading two seconds for him makes a lot of sense. They aren't statistically eliminated yet, but they would have to go on a pretty insane run in the final 25 games if they want to get into the playoffs. I just think the chances of that happening are pretty slim. This is not a team that I feel like should be out they're looking to buy at the trade deadline in all honesty especially a trade like this like two second round picks for Bobby Ryan I would definitely say is a little bit much I think honestly one second round pick would get it done so I'm gonna have to go ahead and say no deal to this one again I do think Bobby Ryan does get dealt but uh, I don't think Vancouver makes a whole lot of sense moving on now to the next comment this one comes from 37 will dog who says the Hurricanes acquire Eric Stahl and the Sabres acquire Cedric Paquette and a third round pick this is a pretty intriguing one to me I really like the idea of Eric Stahl going back to the Carolina Hurricanes, the team he started his career with and played so many years with to help them, you know, load up for the playoffs. It definitely would not cost the Carolina Hurricanes a whole lot. I think it's a buyer's market this year just with everything going on, and it's not like Eric Stahl's lighting the world on fire in Buffalo either. He's only got 10 points in 26 games. I'm gonna go ahead and say deal to this one. I think it's fair for both sides. In Buffalo's case, you get a roster player in Cedric Paquette and the third round pick, which is honestly not bad for an underperforming Eric Stahl in the final year of his contract. If the Carolina Hurricanes did decide to pull off a trade like this and bring Eric Stahl back, it would sort of give them a logjam down the middle because they already have Sebastian Ajo, Vincent Trocek, and Jordan Stahl. Martin Nechaz plays center sometimes as well. But when it comes to the playoffs, you can obviously never have too much depth. This next comment comes from Nolan P who says to Edmonton, Raquel, a second and a fourth. To Anaheim, a first and Lavoie. Side note, not sure about Edmonton's cap situation, so Anaheim would retain as needed to make this work. Yeah, the Oilers don't really have any cap space whatsoever, but Ricard Raquel only makes like 3.7 million, so I don't think it would be too difficult to get something done here. Maybe somebody like Adam Larson or Alex Chason going back the other way as well, but I really like the idea of this trade. I think the Oilers could use another top six winger. Looking at their top six right now, assuming down the middle you have McDavid and Dreisaitl on the wings, you have Nugent Hopkins, Pugliarvi, and Yamamoto. Those three guys are usually mainstays in in the 
top six, but then that other top six winger spot, it's kind of like a revolving door. Sometimes it's Josh Archibald when healthy Zach Cassian plays there sometimes, Alex Chason, even Jujar Kara finds himself in that situation at times. I think if the Oilers got a guy like Ricard Raquel, it would fill out their lineup nicely. You may think that a first round pick and Lavoie is a little bit too much to give up. I don't really think so though, because acquiring Raquel, it's not just a trade deadline rental because he's signed actually through this season of course and also through next season at a very reasonable cap hit of 3.7 million. Raquel is a player who has scored 30 goals in back-to-back -back seasons before. I think he'd be a great addition for the Oilers. The Oilers are trying to win right now. Raquel obviously helps that and for the Ducks you get a solid prospect and a first round pick. I'm going to go ahead and say deal to this one of course if they could make the money work. Moving on now this next comment comes from Tiger58 who says to the Wild, Granlund, to the Preds, Susie, reason the Wild need to fix the power play and the Preds are a bit short-handed on defensemen at the moment. Comes with a tater tot hot dish and a thank you note for Fiala. Okay. Um, I do think Granlin probably gets moved. Nashville is a team that is pretty much out of it at this moment. Like, again, like I said with Vancouver, they're not statistically eliminated, but the chances of them making the playoffs are slim to none. So I think the Wild are going to be big time sellers at the deadline. Granlin will probably be one of the players they sell. The thing is, when it comes to Nashville, though, I feel like in any type of trade they make, they're going to be looking for younger assets, prospects, draft picks, stuff like that. I'm not sure how much a 26 year old Carson Soucy would interest them. Like you said, yes, they do need help on the blue line, but I do think they should probably look to the future a little bit. Now, Carson Soucy is actually signed at a pretty reasonable cap it through the 2022-23 season, so if they did make a trade like this, Soucy would be there for the foreseeable future. And you never know, maybe Nashville doesn't see, you know, a full-on rebuild in their future. Maybe they just want to call this season a wash and then retool a little bit and try to compete again next season. I don't think that would be the smartest move, but you never know. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Predators, who they decide to move on from, what they get in return, and just what they decide to do moving forward. But I am going to go ahead and say no deal to this one. Again, like I said, just for the sole reason that I feel like Nashville should be looking to get prospects and draft picks. Continuing on now, this next mock trade comes from Trey Hamilton, who says the Philadelphia Flyers trade Morgan Frost, Isaac Ratcliffe, a 2021 first round pick in exchange for Matias Ekholm and a 2021 fourth round pick. So another trade involving the Predators here, and I think this one makes a lot more sense. In Nashville's case, you're getting prospects and draft picks here. You're looking towards the future, and honestly, I think Matias Ekholm would be a great fit for the Flyers. They're a team that have massively underperformed so far this season. They're currently on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff picture. They're fifth place in the East right now, and one of the biggest reasons as to why they are struggling this season is defense, and Carter Hart isn't really bailing them out either. In terms of goals against per game, the Flyers are currently sitting at 3.24, which is the seventh worst in the league. Getting a player like Matisse Ekholm would definitely help the Flyers stabilize their blue line, and this wouldn't just be a rental either. I think what they're giving up here, Frost, Ratcliffe, and a draft pick would be a little bit too much if it was a rental, but Ekholm is signed through next season as well, and it's a team-friendly deal. I do think Morgan Frost is going to be a really solid NHL player one day, but the Flyers are pretty loaded up front, especially with the emergence of somebody like Joel Farabee, so I would definitely say Frost is expendable. I'm going to go ahead and say deal to this one. I think it makes a whole lot of sense for both sides. From Fizzer8000 to Edmonton, Luke Landetting to Detroit, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Barry, and Nurse. Now, I know this is obviously a joke, but I wanted to feature it in the video just because I wanted to talk about Luke Lendenning for a second. I'm at the point where I just really hope Luke Lendenning gets traded. I love him as a player. I think he's a great fourth liner, but man, I cannot listen to Fox Sports Detroit talk about how good he is at face-offs for another game. If you're not a Red Wings fan or if you don't watch many Red Wings games, you probably wouldn't get this, but on the Fox Sports Detroit broadcast especially, like six to ten times a game, it is brought up how Luke Lendenning is statistically the best face-off man in the league and I can't listen to it for another game. Please, somebody please trade for Luke Lendenning. I am begging you. Next up from Carter Craig, another mock trade involving Eric Stahl. This one has him going to the Florida Panthers along with a third round pick in exchange for Henrik Borgstrom and a sixth round pick. This is another one that I really like and honestly I feel like I would be a fan of Eric Stahl going to any contending team to be honest. And this season the Florida Panthers definitely look like contenders. Now at first glance you might be thinking there's no 
way the Panthers would give up Henrik Borgstrom, who's a first round pick for them in the 2016 draft, is having a really good season over in Finland for half a season of Eric Stahl, who's at the tail end of his career. But honestly, I don't think it's that far fetched. Earlier this season, Elliot Friedman reported that it is unlikely Borgstrom will ever play for Florida again. He's currently an RFA. He didn't get a deal done before the December deadline. That is the reason Borgstrom is playing in Finland this season to begin with. If that relationship between Borgstrom and the Panthers is just unsalvageable and he doesn't want anything to do with the Panthers anymore, then why not go ahead and make a trade like this? In Florida's case, you're loading up for the second half of the season, you're loading up for a potential playoff push, you get championship experience with Eric Stahl, and for the Sabres, you get a young player in Borgstrom who's 23 years old, and you never know, maybe he becomes something for them. I'm going to go ahead and say deal to this one. So that's two Eric Stahl mock trades I've said deal to in this video, now watch him not get traded at all. Moving on now, this mock trade comes from Keegan McLean who says to Philadelphia Alex Goligoski to Arizona a second and a third round pick so I said earlier in the video how I think Philly could use a defenseman when talking about the Matthias Eckel mock trade but I'm not sure if Alex Goligoski is the defenseman that the Philadelphia Flyers need throughout the majority of Goligoski's career he's been known as sort of an offensive minded defenseman even though this season he isn't really putting up good offensive numbers this would obviously cost a lot less than going out and getting somebody like Eckel but uh, yeah, I don't really think Goligoski is the type of defenseman that Philadelphia needs, so I'm going to say no deal here. Next up, from Little Canadian Goat to Montreal, Dylan Holloway to Edmonton, Philippe Deneau, and a 2021 third round pick. I'm going to say no deal to this one right away. I think Edmonton would be crazy to give up Dylan Holloway, especially if it was just in a rental trade, and I feel like that's what this would be. Holloway is a top-notch prospect. He's got 34 points in 20 games for Wisconsin this season. I don't don't think Edmonton moves him. If they did, I feel like it would have to be for something more than to know, not just a rental. And I don't really think Edmonton needs a center anyways. Next up from Jonah Craft Hockey, Washington Capitals trade away Lars Eller to Minnesota for Marcus Johansson, Carson Soucy, 2024 second round pick, 2023 third, if the Wild do not make the playoffs. I like the idea of the Wild going out and getting a veteran center like Lars Eller. The center position isn't really Minnesota's strong point, but I do think that this this is way too much to give up for somebody like Lars Eller. You're giving up a solid defenseman in Susie, a roster player in Marcus Johansson who contributes, and draft picks. I think that's too much, so for that reason, I'm going to say no deal. From Hatcher Kane, Devils trade Palmieri and Butcher to Boston for DeBrusque and a third round pick. I actually really like this one. I feel like it all comes down to if the Boston Bruins would be willing to move on from Jake DeBrusque. He's obviously struggling mightily this season, but Kyle Palmieri isn't necessarily having the greatest season either. The Bruins would also be getting Will Butcher here, and I feel like they could use another defenseman. I'm going to go ahead and say deal to this one. The Devils will be getting younger, adding Jake DeBrusque, and maybe a change of scenery can light a spark under DeBrusque, and he can get back to being that power forward, goal scoring winger that we know he can be. And for Boston, they're still a team that's trying to win and compete for a Stanley Cup right now, and I feel like Palmieri and Butcher would help them do that more than DeBrusque would. And now, finally, for the last mock trade of the video from Quinn Van Galen, Columbus receives Caleb Jones. Koskinen retained 50% and a second. Edmonton receives Elvis Merzlikens. This is another one similar to what I just said about Jake DeBrusque and if Boston would be willing to move him. I feel like this one would come down to if Columbus actually wants to move one of their goaltenders. Just strictly going based off of the fact that it feels like Merzlikens has been in trade rumors for months on months now. I feel like that doesn't come from nowhere so I honestly think Columbus would be open to trading him. But the way I'm looking at this mock trade it's pretty much Merzlikens for Caleb of Jones, Koskinen's thrown in because Columbus would need another goaltender. Is that necessarily something that would make the Columbus Blue Jackets better right now? I, I honestly don't think so. I don't really think that is a great return for Merzlikens. Caleb Jones is a fine defenseman. He's still relatively young, but I don't think he moves the needle at all. If Columbus came to Edmonton offering this trade, I honestly feel like the Oilers would do it in a heartbeat. I don't really know if it's the greatest deal for Columbus though, so I'm going to say no deal. So that is going to wrap up episode 17 of NHL Deal or No Deal, the final one of the 2021 season. This definitely won't be the last interactive video of the season though, so still be sure to keep an eye out on the community tab. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please be sure to leave it a like, that is the best way to show your support, and most importantly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you all in the next video.